I'm Giulio Vian, coming from Italy. Uh, I've been uh, one of the world person, being a bridge between developers and operations, between developers and the customers. So, always being more, uh, some say, a cushion to absorb the energies between different teams. And now I'm working as DevOps lead in, uh, in Ireland. Uh, my talk will be about uh, uh, integrating uh, performance testing, load testing inside your uh, CI, CD pipelines. So, oh, running, great. So, okay, starting presentation. Let me check the clicker. Let's go, working. Yes? No? No. No mind. So, good afternoon everyone, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, this talk is about, uh, uh, has a kind of a DevOps focus because that's my background. It's about stating the obvious because I think that uh, performance testing should be part of any uh, development pipeline, uh, including the deploying to operation and so on. So. Uh, Feel comfortable to contact me, uh, address here and uh, in the end. Uh, there will be a lot of reference then. Uh, the agenda uh, will be four part session uh, with the closing, resuming, uh, uh, trying to collect all the information and a lot of pointers. Why should be obvious to have performance tests inside your pipeline? Uh, some ideas on how to uh, set up your CI CD integration uh, into um, your performance testing to CI CD. And finally, I will uh, recollect some basics about performance and load testing. So, in general, this topic, uh, this talk is not about clicker. So, good, nothing is working. <laughs> so, let's see if this one, no. Okay. Oh, great. So, it's not. Yeah. Yeah. So this one. Yeah, we we did it. Sorry for the inconvenience, and we lost thirty seconds. I have to go quicker. So, uh, this is basic stuff. Uh, no advanced stuff. No tricks. No trips. Uh, I will touch on some arguments, but very very quickly. Uh, avoid open question uh, during the talk. Just stop me for my English or stuff like that. That's fine. Okay, why it is obvious to add the performance testing to your pipeline? Uh, I like a lot this uh, old blog post uh, uh, from uh, Jeff Atwood, which says there are two kinds of website: the quick and the dead. Because uh, yeah, performance is a feature. And he goes wording better than I can do in describing why is a feature. And that's an idea that someone uh, I've seen uh, people in this agile world that say, yes, Scrum says that we should put on our backlog only the functional stuff. But someone says, we need to put also the non-functional requirement in our backlog and account for that because uh, we have some uh, discoveries from psychology uh, that is the background uh, for s describing the behavior of user against a, an information system uh, that says, if the system is quick, the system seems reactive, instantaneous, it's a machine. Good, less than a second, good. If it is around a second, the person starts to get annoyed about it if it is Many seconds, people will start to do something else, going for a coffee. Okay, and this could be dangerous because you don't often have the chance of imposing your system to your customers. Sometimes you are lucky, you are the government, uh, and you say to your population, this is the system you have to use, like it or not. Okay, but in some cases, uh, like uh, you say, studies from Google, Amazon, they tried to understand how performance impact their by their business uh, they end up in their revenues so they see drop in traffic if the site is low 
which means that the people don't buy on Amazon or don't see ads on Google. So that's important. And if you've seen previously, uh, the study is very old, uh, 70, no, 60 years ago, something like that. Yeah, 40, yeah, okay. So uh, one good metaphor that I use to describe people why we spend, we have to spend money, we have to spend energies into performance testing is this. You buy an engine, but you don't buy just the engine and the gasoline. You also buy the lubricant. Otherwise, sooner or later, the motor will size. Okay. <laughs> and there are jokes about people that forget to do it. Uh, but not in my English. I don't try to do jokes with my English. Uh, another, th another thing, uh, you start to do performance testing since day one. Well, well, uh, this is a topic you need to consider. You have to plan accordingly because not uh, every phase of your product, of your service, of your project re immediately requires performance testing, but there is a good point in the evolution of it that you need it. So you need before you get too many users, before uh, your service is really hitting the road, uh, but maybe not at the beginning when it's just an experimental thing with few users and so on and so forth. So put also put a balance uh, in uh, when uh, you start doing performance testing and what you test. Uh, I had an experience exactly this year, at the beginning of the year. It was Miss Universe uh, website. Uh, you don't think about such an event. Uh, but in the end, it was a big hit because uh, we had a lot of traffic in a very tiny space, in a very short interval of time. Uh, don't matter the, the, the numbers. Uh, my lesson here was we did our homework, we did performance testing, we did load testing, but we never reached those numbers. So uh, it went well, lucky us, but uh, you test up to up to a limit and uh, it was anyway good that we did performance testing because we discovered the issues well before they we went to such a numbers because there were some one of the node.js application was badly done they made mistakes with connection strings or all, all kind of mess but they solved it in time because we started load testing oh by the way i'm not in with the company doing this anymore so don't ask me about this site so ci cd integration uh, a bit of background here also uh, you need usually three things to uh, set up a uh, proper load testing you need some basic tools like uh, script and runners load generators and monitoring uh, you probably ever heard of such tools so jmeter is very famous uh, it's something that enables you to do requests to the system under test uh, through some communication channel, mostly HTTP, HTTPS, but also using a socket or other vehicle of communication. Visual Studio has a similar system, and that's what I will show you later because I'm pretty familiar with that. But, uh, Selenium for a UI and XUnit families, uh, the framework and compassing them all, get, and so on and so forth. Always consider that sometimes you need to write your own custom tool because you are in a specific scenario that is not easily covered by the existing tooling. Uh, and this is just the most famous thing for me, at least. There are tons of other tools that can help you in writing scripts that exercise a uh, system under test. Uh, but those scripts, uh, uh, you need uh, uh, additional tooling. Uh, the tooling that will generate a sustained load uh, against your system. Nowadays, we have a number of uh, possibilities. Uh, there are a lot of cloud services that enables you to do uh, load testing. Okay, uh, Microsoft has one. Uh, Blaze Meter now is acquired by CA. Cloud test now buy by Akamai, and everyone is buying. So HP Roadrunner, very famous in the testing community. But uh, the characterization, uh, some of these tools are only for cloud applications. So 
for your system under test is a cloud app. Uh, other can be set up also on premises. So um, Microsoft has individual studio families, stuff like that, HP also, and so on. Or custom, you still have some scenario where those tools are, are not for you. So maybe you have some embedded application running on a small device and you cannot use any of these tools because the agents are too, too big uh, and so on. But there is a third leg to sustain the table of performance testing, which is about monitoring. And uh, here uh, there are no simple solution uh, because uh, usually Windows is kind of simple system to monitor uh, because there is a standard, uh, well-defined API that everyone uses and allows you to monitor at various level of the stack. You can monitor low-level events at the OS level and you can monitor at the application level, for example, SQL Server or your own uh, counters. Uh, in Unix, uh, stuff are more complicated. There are many different tools that can monitor different uh, facets of the operating system and uh, applications usually write to uh, their own uh, file logging and you need to collect them and parse them. Uh, the end result of this is that often uh, you have two distinct tools, one for generating the load, another tool to monitor the system under test, how is it behaving and so on. And which means that you have to do your own work in uh, matching the data and having an overall view of the system because the tool uh, generating the load is the tool that uh, has some graphs, counters, and so on, and will tell you from his viewpoint, from its viewpoint, uh, how the system is behaving, how the requests are coming out from the test rig. Uh, the monitoring is telling you how the receiving system is behaving. So, in general, you have this type of architecture when you think of adding your CI-CD pipeline. So, you are the tester, the developer, the operation guy, the uh, DevOps person. That is uh, the, ooh, what happened? I pressed the button, yeah. Ah, good. <laughs> Too many buttons. Uh, the CI-CD pipeline, uh, you use uh, the tool that you prefer, so it could be Jenkins, could be Team City, could be uh, TFS, could be whatever you like, uh, Bamboo, for example. This tool usually has some kind of task component uh, uh, activity that will interact with some third-party tool for the load generation, which is really doing the load testing on the uh, system under test. And then you have monitoring. And it's up to you. As to correlate uh, these things. So, uh, you want to see something? Okay? Yeah, okay. Well, uh, I try to be quick because uh, time is uh, it's not much. So, I need to understand on which screen I'm working on. So, where is my mouse? Here, good. So, I need to move the way. Sorry for the inconvenience, but okay. I'm working in a split screen condition, so be be patient uh, a little. So, uh, first of all, uh, system under test. We have a little application here. Uh, it's a simple web service that will uh, answer to a REST request and will give you, still working? I hope so, okay. Uh, it, it's a simple REST and so you can put uh, any letter and will query a database for a list of countries and give you the answer in a, in a JSON format. Very basic stuff, no magic fancy thing. Okay, it's just a query on a database table. And uh, we want to integrate this into uh, our uh, CI CD. So we, okay. Okay, uh, this is uh, Visual Studio Team System, and uh, uh, first of all, consider how we build the application. Okay, uh, there is a little uh, things to notice here. 
as tell me that I click the wrong menu yes <laughs> uh, okay this isn't working really well. build okay yes okay uh, we have a build for our application okay and this build is component by a number of steps so maybe I go to edit okay maybe this green thanks uh, nothing fancy here you have a compilation step okay okay so you compile everything that you need for your app and especially you have those steps that collect everything that you need for deployment and also for the load testing so uh, I have this idea that you create a baseline from CI that describes what is the baseline for your system including the testing scripts so you have a specific version of everything okay then uh, okay we have the release pipelines okay which are controlling the deployment and automating that part okay and we have uh, a deployment pipeline which is if I can no yeah okay in the deployment pipeline okay is made uh, has a source uh, the the build that we b did before and interestingly okay you can set up a continuous in a continuous delivery okay so in this case I have a continuous delivery that will pick up the output of the build and deploy into the cloud okay and the deployment is made of uh, a few steps very few truly two steps uh, it's a bit off screen don't you okay maybe now you see it better so you have this step here which is uh, deploying the application into the cloud uh, you don't need to say much you just say that uh, picking up the output of the builds and uh, deploying to a specific account uh, in a specific data center and so on and so forth and you have a second interesting piece here uh, this step will do a very basic load testing to your app so it's running for one minute with 25 user load on a single URL so this is kind of a sanity check or smoke test as you like and you can embed it into your pipeline so this is a first basic form of integration of uh, basic testing inside your pipeline in this case uh, uh, it's this agent that is running this okay uh, but you can do something more sophisticated okay and something we maybe queue it okay go back to releases medium right it's medium okay and uh, this is composed by a single step okay so this pipeline is even simpler because this single step uh, will send will upload uh, to the test rig which is in the cloud all that is needed to do our performance testing so it's uploading this file here that we will see quickly which is named the medium it's the medium load test yes okay uh, and it's deploying this into the cloud uh, and everything is specified there so very simple from your point of view to uh, integrate into your pipeline now uh, sorry for the switch of gears because now it's black and uh, you don't see it obviously because it's on the other screen yeah uh, the load testing script oh it's so tiny tiny uh, it's uh, yeah uh, it's composed by two or three important things okay so you specify uh, the running time of the of the load in this case uh, I specify uh, here 
Let me see if there is a... No. Uh, I specify a 15 minutes run. Okay. Uh, let me see if I can highlight through the mouse. Yes, here. Okay. 15 minutes run. Okay, run duration. Okay. And uh, we specify where to run it, uh, which is here. And uh, you specify uh, how you run it. Not this one. Okay, here. So, uh, another typical thing of uh, load testing is to specify uh, how the load should be generated. In this case, I say start with 50 users, increment by 100 users after a minute. So, for incrementing in steps uh, up uh, to reaching 500 users and then stay there. Okay, uh, what it does uh, is specify the, uh, I think, here. Okay, uh, no, not that one. No, it's specified here, sorry. Oh, it's not so easy with the split screen like this. Okay. Should be, uh, one of these things. Uh, there you specify the, scripts to r the script to run, uh, which is just here, and it's, uh, script a little more complicated than uh, um, you may have with simple uh, inquiring. Because in this case, I exemplify how to extract data, validate the data, so uh, the result uh, is yellow or red, uh, if the, not just for a 500, but even if you get a 200, a HTTP 200, the return code, uh, uh, if the content is not good, uh, you get an error. So usually in a script you have all this kind of uh, sophistication. Okay, we can um, go back to our slides, I think. A uh, couple of considerations for CICD. Okay, you can uh, have your load testing part of the normal pipeline, so what I consider the, the main pipeline, the trunk, or you can have it in a branch, uh, because sometimes you require a lot of time to run the tests. Uh, you need resources. Uh, On-premises, you need hardware to set up the test rig. In the cloud, uh, yes, you can have infinite resources in the cloud, but you have to pay for them. Okay, so you need maybe a credit card or something like that. The important thing is to define a priori in general, but sometimes a posteriori the KPI, so the, the indicator that you want to look after and uh, understand. Uh, let's zoom in a bit on the time factor. So there are some short running tests. Before we saw that we have tests running for one minute, the other tests were running for 15 minutes. There are tests that require hours of running. Uh, so you can fit a 30-minute test uh, into your normal CI pipeline. So it should be something uh, asynchronous. Okay, should be something run at night or in a synchronous way with respect to, to the main one. And you need to balance uh, with the costs. Uh, so uh, often it's better to have some very quick smoke tests for your CI and have some very thorough testing uh, uh, at night or in load uh, moment um, of overload. Uh, so you can reduce the frequency of execution of some tests uh, uh, with respect to others. Uh, the bottom line is that focus on what you get from a specific test uh, in order to balance uh, how often uh, you run it. Oh, yeah. Uh, some from live experience, uh, keep in mind that uh, the behavior of the cloud is different from what you expect uh, from on-premise infrastructure, because uh, the warm-up factor is very, very different. Uh, um, for example, um, in AWS, uh, you set up, uh, say, 100 virtual machine, but you don't control how many machines are uh, working at uh, the ALB role, uh, which is something managed by uh, AWS. Uh, so for having a significant test, uh, you need to warm up this ELB because Amazon will spawn out uh, 
additional and bigger instance for the ALB role if it sees that role uh, load is incoming. So maybe you need one hour or two of loading, uh, gradual loading, before you get uh, enough ELB instances to uh, hit uh, uh, your, your system under test. Uh, there are other gremlins, for, for example, configuration of the operating system, the number of open files, the number of working process for Nginx. There are a number of things that are by default uh, with low numbers that you need to tune up before starting load testing. Oh, this is something that you see at the beginning of your load te testing. So there are a lot of things that you uh, find uh, at the operational level, not just at the code level. And the third thing to monitor uh, is the client resources. So um, every machine that is generating load can generate only a certain amount of load, okay? Uh, sometimes you, you, you screw up the parameters of your test load and you put too much load on your client machine and they are simply not able to cope with the load, especially if your scri scripts are complicated and there's, there's a lot of uh, uh, checking of values, parsing the results and so on and so forth. They require a lot of CPU, so you cannot use, uh, you have to use more machines uh, for generating the load. Okay, so far so good. Let's review some of the basics. Probably, maybe you know, you need, you already know them or not. Uh, focus on what are the goals of your uh, load testing. Could be that you want to benchmark, understand uh, the, the possibilities of your app. Uh, could be that you want to see when your application breaks. Uh, could be that you want to see how it behaves under uh, a heavy load, especially if it breaks, how it breaks. Because sometimes when application goes uh, under too much load, instead of presenting a nice 500 page, uh, they start to leak connection string uh, or stack dump uh, or stuff like that. Seen this from live, uh, probably you all have seen uh, real sites doing this. And you see the nice Java or .NET stack dump on the page instead of a result or even a, a nice user error. So, what's the scope of your testing? A uh, typical problem that you find when you start uh, testing something for the first time or even after some changes in the code uh, on the architecture. Uh, exhaustion of the connection pooling, so uh, too many requests uh, that goes to the database at the same time. Uh, if you use a lot of the local file system, uh, locks at the database level, so for example, uh, indexes can lock uh, in other inserts, uh, so you have many different paths of code that does inserts and updates, uh, and they lock each other. Uh, deadlocks at the thread level, so on the application tile inside the, pro the application process, exhaustion of memory, uh, and the domino effect. So sometimes uh, you just see that the application has stopped responding, uh, and the problem is down there in the database, and you see just 500 at the web level. Okay. Uh, major indicators, so this is basic stuff uh, that uh, latency uh, means that the time that the system under, te under test takes to respond. Always keep in mind that uh, this is exactly the latency that you have uh, if you are working on premise. Uh, if you're working on the cloud, you're really seeing a lot of other stuff in between and that your customer can see even different latency just due to the networking, how it is designed, uh, how it is uh, accessed by the various uh, users. Uh, so throughput, which is the number of requests that the system under test is able to respond per unit of time, and the level of load, which is the number of parallel requests that uh, you are generating. And so the system is sustaining. Uh, two other major indicators are the error rate, so the number of errors for, for the request that you get, and uh, 
always to monitor the errors at the tool level, at the tool generating the load, so on the clients that are generating the load. Uh, you can put this in a very nice graph, and uh, most of the tool will give you uh, not this composite graph, uh, but something like this. Uh, this is the expected behavior by any kind of system. Okay, so you increase the load, so the load is in the x-axis. In the y-axis, uh, we have the latency, usage, and throughput, we described it before. And the latency usually has a non-linear behavior, because as the load increases, the system is a starting to stress and the resources are starting to get limited. For example, uh, the, star the system is starting to um, paging memory or thrashing between processes or between threads. It could be a any uh, of such effect. And the latency goes down in a non-linear way. Uh, corresponding to that, usage will go up and uh, uh, reach a plateau and usually uh, don't go more than that. So you know the limit of the system under test, but the throughput will go down because you will uh, get more and more stuff in some of the implicit queue that you have in the system under, under test. Because you have a lot of queue in the system. You have queue at the networking level in your routers, you have the queue at the load balancing level, you have queue at the operating system level, you have the queue at the web uh, server level, and so on and so forth. Every system has some queue, plus your own application queue that you may have in your system. Maybe you're using, uh, uh, I don't know, man queue series or uh, whatever. Okay. So, an example. If your graphs are going like that, uh, probably you have a problem. You're not able to sustain that kind of load, and the system is uh, reacting badly, probably. Uh, if the usage uh, is going down so steeply, uh, you have some kind of deadlocks and it's not able to serve anything. So kind of stuck or maybe the process died uh, or whatever. So that's the kind of behavior that you need to, to look after. Anything that is uh, away from the initial graph. Uh, so th those are the things that you need to uh, look in those uh, graphs and diagrams, response curve, inflection point, bottlenecks. Uh, generally, yeah, you have two types of application. For the web app, consider that you have a lot of other pieces in between the various uh, components of the app, physical tires, but a lot of networking here nowadays. Performance testing can be also conducted on a mobile application, on desktop application, or generic library. In this case, the system under test is usually in the same uh, machine that is running the agent. Uh, maybe, maybe not. Uh, but it's usually different and you use, uh, don't use uh, the, the most common tools that uh, you have at hand. Uh, okay. Uh, physical indicators, CPU, CPU should grow a little steadily until you reach some kind of top. If you see a 100% CPU, yeah, something bad is happening. If you see like um, the jigsaw at between 100 and 98% CPU, the system is behaving good. So all the queues are, w are working well. R RAM, uh, so you sh should, shouldn't start paging. So all the processes you start should work in the uh, available physical RAM physical or virtual, yes, but I mean for virtual machine, uh, not start to paging. Uh, disk I.O. is also another parameter that you need to check uh, because sometimes you, it's an indication of the system that is using a lot of thrashing in a local cache or um, that they starting to paging. Uh, network I.O. As also, uh, you can have bottleneck there and uh, uh, start to see that it's not going through. And the number of thread the process may indicate that uh, bad architecture, so maybe spawning a thread per request or stuff like that instead of pulling. Okay, we are near to the end. Uh, you will not be able to implement anything without proper resources. Okay, uh, so you need to have some kind of funding from uh, from the 
executive level or from the budget level because you need time to implement, uh, you need to pay for tools, you need to pay licenses. Uh, all the cloud testing tools uh, will uh, require you to pay in a way or, or another. Uh, sometimes they build on your cloud account, sometimes they have the, uh, their own building. Um, another thing to consider is that uh, performance testing is never done uh, because the system under, under test uh, is not always changing. So they change a piece of code, they change uh, architecture, they tune this, they tune that, and the system may go bad, uh, they run, uh, run amok. Uh, I saw uh, an, a news a uh, few times ago regarding uh, uh, this person in Microsoft, they, they delivered a new regular expression, okay, to optimize uh, the parsing of a, of a URL, and uh, um, and this went amok, and uh, they started having thresholds. So this optimization instead that gave, gave a bad result uh, because they tested with a limited number of locale of different country uh, settings, while in production they had all possible country settings, and that the caching were not working anymore. So it's never finished. So even if you think that you tested everything, uh, production is always something to to consider and choose to invest wisely in all the tests. Quickly, we have done uh, bibliography. Uh, there are the links, uh, the source code uh, uh, for the app uh, and the slides, uh, uh, some pointers to articles and manuals, some books that you can find on this topic. There is not much. There is not much regarding the performance tuning. Uh, and they are very valuable. Uh, mm, also a couple of books regarding DevOps and the perspective that we should have on all those initiatives. Uh, okay, you can reach me. Uh, I'm Italian, but now I'm working in uh, Ireland. Uh, belongs to a number of community and started long ago with uh, Texas Instrument 57 and with uh, Sinclair ZX80. Maybe someone remembers it. That's very old stuff. And uh, now it's up to you uh, to go back to your business and start to implement something uh, according to uh, some of the suggestions that you may have uh, received today if uh, you find something useful in my talk. And with this, we have done.